Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. I'm so happy to see you. I'm Pastor Steve, your interim pastor, and it's a joy to be here today. There's so many things we're celebrating. Um, not only uh, the change of seasons, hey, it was a little cooler this week, wasn't it? But also the fact that our congregation has been faithful in so many ways to the call of the gospel. Thanks for your participation. Thanks for being involved. Uh, I want to highlight the fact that confirmation is underway. If by chance we've missed you, uh, a member of your family, please let us know because we're alternating uh, Sunday evenings with our classes. I'd love to have every young people uh, uh, person involved. So take a, take a look at that and give us some help if we need it. Uh, also, please be reading your e-news every week and newsletters as much as you can. There's lots of things to be aware of. I want you to know that um, the church is open and we are active together. So thanks for being here. Enjoy the worship and may God bless it this morning.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, all our friends. Welcome to Children's Time. I'm so glad you're here worshiping with us today. And uh, as usual, I brought my box. So let's see what's going on. Now, I have something to confess. You know what confess means? It's to tell you the truth. Pastor knows what's in here today because Pastor put it in here. Okay, so I still want your help. You tell me uh, what you think you can do to connect what I have in the box with God, what God wants us to do and what Jesus would have us remember today, okay? I'm asking for your help. Here we go, I'm opening my box and, oh, look at this. Anybody know what this is? I bet you do. Even the youngest of our friends know what's been happening. This is a mask. It is my mask. I have more than one, just to let you know, and you probably do too. But this is made for a special purpose, isn't it? There was a time when I bet none of you would know what that was. You, you would think, what the, what the heck is this? And why would we want to put something on like this? It kind of, you know, it, sometimes I have trouble getting it over my ears. There, now, this is the way I wear it, right? Why do I wear that mask? Why do I wear that mask? I'll take it off so you can talk with me a little bit. Well, one thing is, it protects me from some of the bugs and the germs and the viruses that might come and fill my lungs. It gets caught in this fabric, right? Which keeps it away from me. But the other thing, and maybe more important, is it protects everybody who gets close to me from breathing in those viruses and germs that I may be projecting, I may be throwing out there. That's pretty important, isn't it? First of all, it's important that we protect ourselves. But it's really important that we think of each other too, right? Jesus talks a lot about the family of God, and you are a part of that family. Did you know that? That's right. You're Jesus' son and daughter, your brothers and sisters in Christ, Right? And even though you're little, you have an important part to play. So I like to think of this. Every time I think of the body of Christ, the church, those to whom I am related through Jesus, it's important to remember what's good for them. When I put my mask on each day, and I try to do that when I'm with others, I like to remind myself that it's to protect me, but maybe even more importantly, it's to protect others. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? That's good news for all of us. We want to be safe. We want to protect the gift of our health and what God has done, right? But we also want to protect each other. So thank you very much, those of you who have been wearing these masks. And I know in school, those of you going to school, you need to wear these all day. And that must be a challenge. It's not always comfortable, is it? <laughs> but think what you're doing for others. Remember, God loves all of us, and God wants us to care for each other. Part of that is being responsible. You know that word? Being a responsible person and caring for the other. So please remember that. When you put on your masks again, keep in mind you're doing God's will. You're serving God's people. 
and you're being a very faithful young person. Thank you very much. This was fun. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. But I want to remind you, I love it when you send things in for me to look at. Until we get together again in church the way we normally did many months ago, I rely on you to send me something. So you do that. And I can tell you our administrator, Liz, is always ready to help. Give her a call. She'll be here and can help you out. So God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. As part of a call for harmony rather than self-seeking, Paul uses a very early Christian hymn that extols the selflessness of Christ in his obedient death on the cross. Christ's selfless perspective is to be the essential perspective we share as the foundation for Christian accord. A reading from Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the same gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. 
Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable before you, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm told that the, uh, great, the Greek playwright Euripides said, authority is never without hate. It's fair to say, I think, that the chief priests and the elders were not very fond of Jesus. Listen to the text we just read, right? He made them nervous. He um, impelled them to ask, from, which, from, from where comes the power, the authority that you have? And like kids on the playground, I think those uh, scribes and Pharisees probably answered, you ain't the boss of me, let me tell you. <laughs> Jesus' authority in truth came from somewhere else. It came not from earthly places, but from God. And you know, authority is never the same as power. Authority is given. Power is frequently taken. Authority, as the word implies, comes from the author. So after Jesus has entered the holy city, Jerusalem, he goes to the temple and he cleanses the temple. And his authority is questioned in today's passage from Matthew. And he responds with another parable this week, the parable of the two sons. I'm just going to read that section of the gospel again. What do you think, says Jesus? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he didn't go at all. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. So Jesus, as usual, takes a question and asks another question of the Pharisees and then illustrates with this powerful parable. Like the prostitutes and tax collectors who repent, knowing their need of grace, the first son says no. But then he changes his mind and he goes into the vineyard to work for his father. And it would seem to me that the implication of Jesus' story is that the second son, who says, yes, I'm going, but never goes to do what he said he'd do, is just like the scribes and just like the temple authorities. You know, it's easy to say yes. And sometimes it's easy to say no. I can tell you of many experiences I've had with my wife, I have to be honest, and she's probably watching right now, Deborah, don't laugh. There are times when I certainly tell you, yes, I'm going to take care of the dishes. Yes, I'm going to take the trash out. Yes, I'm going to make dinner this week. But you know, sometimes my yes is hollow and it doesn't get done. There are also those times I say, no, absolutely not. I'm not doing that. But I change my mind. I change my mind. For Jesus, it seems, the faith that doesn't result in faithful action is mere talk. We call that hypocrisy, don't we? Is that the word? Yeah. The truth of your commitment always lies in your heart, says Jesus. At least for those of us who profess a faith 
We ought to live that faith in lives that are consistent. So as one of my seminary professors points out, <laughs> it hurts my Lutheran prejudices that it isn't what we say but what we do that matters. It's the old issue of works righteousness, you know? It's not what we do that gets us to heaven, it's God in Jesus Christ. And of course that's always true. But my, my professor was saying this, he said, Jesus cared a lot about a profession of faith when it led to faithful works of love and concern for the fellow human being. It's hard to hear from Jesus that the preferred son is the one that does the right thing. He said the wrong thing, but he did the right thing. And the one who says the right thing never follows through. For Jesus, the faith that doesn't result in faithful action, again, is mere talk. So the primary point of this parable is about having a change of heart to me. It's not necessarily, am I the first or the second son? As I said, I myself could say I've been either of those and both of those at any given time. What's more important is, are we willing to accept that God accepts our change of heart, that God encourages a change of heart. Let me illustrate with this. There were two couples that came to a pastor to be married. One couple planned a beautiful wedding. They made sure the lighting was right, the music was correct, the texts were chosen with care, their vows were memorized, everything perfectly done, and guess what? Both of them have suffered physical and, yes, mental abuse from each other. And both have been unfaithful to each other. Now, a second couple, call them couple B, they didn't bother to come to the pastor. They forgot the church. They didn't even really want anything that was technically marked with the church's imprimatur. They just decided to do their own thing. And they got married. And guess what? They have remained faithful to each other. They have loved each other as God would hope. So which couple would you say, which couple did the will of God? You know, it, it's easy to say uh, the one that was, was faithful to each other was following God's will. I think it's also true that the other couple, the first couple, while wanting to affirm their marriage with the words of the church, with scripture and the liturgy of the church, that they perhaps lost their way. So Jesus says, I think, I want your words to speak the truth from your heart. I want you to love me and obey my commandments. And they're really simple. Love God, love me, and love each other. That's the call to all of us. Now, lest you want to give up and throw up your arms and say, Steve, that's a pretty discouraging message because we all know we can't be perfectly faithful. I want to make sure you hear the gospel. If we listen, if we hear in this parable the surprising possibility of hope that someone who has refused to listen to God may yet change his or her mind, Hope that it's never too late to respond to the grace of the gospel. Hope that one's past actions or current status do not determine one's future. I think if we hear that hope, we realize that God has opened great possibilities, not only for us, but for those that challenge us. Someone has said this, each moment is, a, is pregnant with the possibility of receiving God's grace, repenting of things we've done or were done to us, returning to right relationships with God and those around us, and receiving the future as open rather than determined. Here's the good news. It's never too late. It's never too late for you or for me. It's never too late for the people of the church. It's never too late 
for our family and friends. God is not finished with us yet. And we, like the son who sometimes says, no way, can choose to show up, can be there faithfully. We started with the question of authority. I want to close with this thought from Matthew's Gospel. Those who ask Jesus, by what authority do you do these things, should remember this. The end of Matthew's Gospel, we hear these words. All authority, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and proclaim the good news of the gospel. Amen. as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In all the world, give your church unity 
inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your Son took on all of bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged, so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Turn the nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Our lives are yours, O oh God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry, or exploited, exploited bullied, or lonely. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Turn this congregation away from our own interests toward the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community, especially Echo and the greater Brandon Meals on Wheels. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, we are thankful people, thankful for so many good gifts. Despite the challenges of today that we face, we celebrate God's abundance. And it was so wonderful last week to see so many of you come uh, along with uh, the drive-by um, food drop-off. We did a wonderful job. Thank you so much for the food, for the response. It was so good to meet many of you uh, and to celebrate the fact that we can do something to make the world different. We can say yes, and we can go and do the Father's will. And so thanks for that. And continue to remember our church in your prayers and with your gifts. We are challenged, as always, to meet the many needs of our own church, but also the community and the world at large. And I know you are generous people. I know you care enough about us to make the gifts that are necessary for us to serve God faithfully. So thank you. God bless you.
Please join me now as we do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.